high accessibility, ease of use. There are some avenues that I can grow um, in ways that I'm going to have you know the best e-commerce experience for my users. Number one, the, it's the, if you're in the Olympics, this is the first hurdle. They have to be able to find um, uh, the products they're actually looking for. We are going to talk about building e-commerce apps. Mm -hmm. So. When you're putting together an application and you're obviously doing that kind of online sales process, there's a lot of features. And I would like to say the caveat that you don't have to have all of these features, yeah. especially if you're trying to be very agile and go with like an MVP type of a build. But these are things that you could should consider. So considerations of how am I going to expand my app, where are some avenues that I can grow, um, in ways that I'm going to have you know the best e-commerce experience for my users. Yeah. So yeah. first and foremost, I would say it's pretty self-explanatory, but you need to have an easy sign-up process. Usually the sign-up process is like genuinely the first barrier to entry to actually purchase something on an e-commerce site of any sort. It's right. Number one, the, it's the, if you're in the Olympics, this is the first hurdle. You mm -hmm. know? Um, a lot of users will just bounce on hard signups, and that that's kind of the goal with an easy signup of just making it so they can either use like social media, like you know Apple mm -hmm. ID, Google Sign In, Twitter, Facebook, all all the different networks, yeah. something like that. A lot of the time, it is a little overbearing when you have so many different like authentication providers because you sure. have just like here's an email or password and like twenty different providers at the bottom, which is pretty common. But um, just being able to go through that process quickly. Um, in an accessible way, which that's another important thing, is the most likely people to purchase products online are also people who tend to have a reason to not shop in a store. So what do you think is another important thing, you know? Having a very good search feature to find your products. Mm, okay. Um, you want customers to be purchasing what you have on offer, and the only way you're going to be able to do that is if they can find what they're actually looking for. Um, it's kind of like the an analogy of going into a store that's gigantic and no one's around to ask questions. How are you going to find? And there's no maps on the wall. You know, yeah. you got to be able to. They have to be able to find. Um, uh, the products they're actually looking for, and because of that, a search feature, an, adva an advanced search feature, is is really quite necessary. It's an early investment, and also a thing that's on offer for a lot of like off-the-shelf solutions as well. Right. It's a very important part of uh, pretty much any e-commerce solution. Um, you want your customers to be able to find what they want to buy. Yeah. Um, another big trend as well, actually, uh, that often relates to search is mm -hmm. voice recognition. Okay. Um, especially for mobile experience, a lot of the time people just don't really like typing in mm -hmm. stuff into mm -hmm. uh, really any form at all that mm -hmm. they can get away with. Um, and voice recognition is kind of a somewhat simple solution nowadays that allows people to kind of just actually speak what they want to find, much as if, you know, using the same analogy of finding a store employee to ask where something is, asking your phone, uh, mm -hmm. or even your laptop, but more commonly mobile mm -hmm. devices, um, for the product you're looking for is becoming increasingly common. And uh, the nice part about that is a lot of the time it's actually just built into the phone, so it's yeah. a very cheap integration to add to a lot of e-commerce sites for support. A lot of the time it's just making sure that the button is showing, and then the Got phone it. takes care of the rest. So, gotcha. it's a, so it's a, just yeah. because I have Surrey on my phone doesn't necessarily mean that it integrates with Surrey for me to just start talking to it and be yeah. like, hey, look up this thing. Like. As a development team, you have to actually keep in mind that you, it's easy to do potentially, but you got to enable it. Yes, it's the answer sort of kind of. Uh, sort of kind of. Good. Cause, I like cause, those cause, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, there, there's so many sort of kinds in in our industry, but the, the you can use Siri or uh, the Google Assistant on any form you want, mm -hmm. like any single one. If you have the keyboard open, there's a button for it. Right. It'll just okay. work. Yep. Yep. Um, that said, there are ways to make the integration more tight in okay. the sense of making it more accessible, more obvious to a user who may be unfamiliar with voice recognition, that mm -hmm. that is a feature that's available. There are ways to make it uh, basically more accessible. Um, and that's that's more what I'm talking about. Encouraging its use instead of just letting the user decide is kind of a, a, a little bit more of like, yeah, this is an easier way to do the same thing you've been doing. So That's cool. Yeah. One thing that I've seen a lot on sites, um, you know, in the last probably five years, is like augmented reality integration yeah. type stuff. So the whole idea that we've all, well, I'm assuming you probably have at some point, like shopped around for a couch or a bed yeah. or a yeah. speaker stand or something, and you pop it up, and usually uh, Amazon because that's where we all are, mm -hmm. and you pop it up, and you're like, hey, let me just pull my camera, and ooh, let me, ooh, that looks nice there. Ooh, what about here in the room? And having those kind of AR integration type stuff is starting to become much more standard on a lot of e-commerce sites. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and not only that, but AR and VR too. Mm -hmm. There's some massive players betting oh, yeah. the whole family's fortune on that working out. Uh, I'm looking at you, Meta. Um, <laughs> 
And uh, I think that we haven't reached maturity with the tech, to be honest. A lot okay. of the time, like you can obviously, you like I think I think it's Wayfair has an AR integration. They right? do, yeah. Yeah, and you can you take your phone, you can point it in a corner where you want your couch to be, and we'll just kind of put it there. Mm -hmm. um, and that's cool. But seeing what you want to buy through a you know five inch screen is not genuinely ideal. So sure. I think there's a lot of maturity to come with like the AR glasses and things that mm -hmm. are showing up. That it might be good to get invested into that technology pretty early, especially because it's uh, not that difficult to actually do so. Yeah. I think the biggest trouble is just simply having three-dimensional models of all the products you want to have on offer for your AR integration. Sure. Um, but the good news is that typically the way those 3D models are generated is by literally just going around the, the product itself and taking pictures of it. And it just they, they do it automatically nowadays thanks to uh, 3D photogrammetry, which is a whole other topic. But yeah. Um, yeah, AR is really interesting, and I think we're going to see a lot more coming out of it. Um, it kind of depends on how future-proof you want to be for that marketplace. I don't know necessarily how much heat is there right now, but I think it's one of those speculative, like, I think people are going to want this someday. I think they're going to want it a lot. Um, it's a neat thing yeah. that's happening in the space right now. Yeah. Personalized recommendations. This is something that you know we all love when we go to the site oh, yeah. and we're looking at something and then they're showing us something else related to it that is actually related to it. Because we've yeah. all also been on the sites where they're recommending things and you're like, what is this? I don't know. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> then, of course, you buy it a week later. Yeah. You're like, I really did need that potato <laughs> peeler. Like, but I, yeah. never, I never knew I'd want cornflakes while buying a fishing pole. Exactly. Yeah. So with personalized recommendations, yeah, I mean, how does that, again, continue to yeah. expand on that e-commerce experience and make people want to come back to your site? Yeah, well, I think there's, there's two sides to it. Obviously, there's the consumer side of, like, it's kind of nice having products that are similar to what you're buying, like nice accessories, mm -hmm. nice uh, some sort of a complementary experience to be offered, right? Um, I think that that's really nice as a consumer of like, you know, a good example would be like Amazon. The way they do the recommendation engine, as far as I can tell from the top down, is that it seems like they're just tracking what other users looked at this product and then bought this other thing and then yeah, yeah. correlating that, okay. right? Um, and that makes really nice kind of like bundles and deals and just a good experience for the consumer. The plus side of that too is obviously it's a massive sales opportunity on the sure. e-commerce provider side. Because um, you know you obviously want to sell your products, and people are more likely to buy products that complement each other. That's mm -hmm. just that's just the name of the game. So there's a lot to it. They're co usually called recommendation engines. There's a lot of ways to get around it. I've seen ones that are done in machine learning. I've seen ones that are kind of uh, ones that are done in kind of like a correlation standpoint, much like how Amazon is doing it. From what I can tell, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some machine learning going on back there sure. too. Um, and uh, it, it tends to be kind of a large feature, but I think it's one of those ones that really does give back a substantial ROI, especially if you have an already large user base. Perfect. Yeah. Product ratings, reviews. I love obviously being able to go and you know check all the three stars. I'm a like I'm a huge proponent of three star reviews because of fives and ones are liars, as I always say. So you go <laughs> you go check bots. you go yeah. check out those three stars because yeah. they're telling you the truth. So being able to rate products, review products, go look at those is is a you know for me is an important feature. Mm -hmm. um, how important is that if you're you know looking to do a, a slim MVP style solution? Do you care about that? Do you not? Uh, I, I I think you do, okay. um, and I think the reason you do is because for any e-commerce provider, ratings and reviews have pretty much become kind of ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. But there's an asterisk to that, and that is that ratings and reviews on your own site, mm -hmm. where it's just your store or something of that sort, are typically not really trusted. Mm. Because it's so easy to manipulate what they actually are. I mean, it, we've probably been to any random marketing site, and it'll be like, 3,000 five-star reviews, and you're like, yeah, right, buddy. <laughs> right, <laughs> this sure. product's been out for minutes. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think that that especially is more true if you're like integrating with a marketplace, okay. like on Amazon or Got like a, a, another company would be like Newegg.com. There's lots of marketplaces mm -hmm. out there where products are aggregated from different e-commerce providers, and right. that's where those reviews and ratings really matter. So I would say it is important for an MVP if you're integrating into a marketplace. And if you are, well, guess what? You don't really have to develop that feature. You just have to honor it. I want to cut through these last like three points pretty quick because I think they're all sort of some way related to, you know, like basically the shopping cart, kind of yeah. like how do I feel yeah. about experience. It's secure payments, I think is extremely important. Uh, we want to talk about shipping options and easy return policies. Oh, yes. So secure payment. 
it just seems obvious. How are people quickly getting secure payment opportunities out of the box and on their site? So I think that there's two sides to this, much like a few of the other things we talked about, and that is something that is actually secure mm -hmm. and something that is perceived as secure. Mm. Because you can have a secure solution to collect payment from your users, yep. but if it's through a provider they don't recognize, they're just not going to trust it. Okay. Um, and that that is something that will bounce a certain amount of users that are concerned over such a thing, especially in this day and age with so many scams and other crazy yeah. things going on. So your name matters. Yeah, so you got to use really well-recognized names. I mean, that's okay. just kind of the, the security of payment is a lot of times just the cloud of the name and the provider. Um, a good example would be like if you're using some sort of a third-party payment provider that isn't PayPal, people are going to be like, I don't know. Um, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do I trust Cody Source for my payments? Yeah, exactly. I don't know if I do. Yeah, like it, yeah. There, there's obviously some other ones out there that are, do have a bit of a name to them, but I think they're industry specific. And realistically, your secure payment is, yeah, it needs to be secure, but it also needs to be recognized as secure. I like that kind of perception versus reality situation yeah. there of like, yeah, reality is this could be a secure, but if it's not perceived as that, how secure is it? So yeah, useful when shopping around. Shipping options. Shipping op options are really uh, quite interesting, actually, because yeah. obviously users care about being able to like pay more to get something quicker right. or it, get that accurately and be able to type Or pay in. the same and get it today. <laughs> yeah, 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 pay the same and get it today, Amazon. Um, but... Uh, the, the other part of that is being able to, you know, get estimations mm -hmm. and, and know how much things are actually going to cost, not just a flat rate. But it's kind of complex because you as an e-commerce provider also need to know how much it's really going right. to take to ship. So because of that, that means you need a lot of product metadata, like their mm -hmm. dimensions, their weight, you know, any type of weird other facts of it. Like, is it a restricted hazmat item? Are you selling something that has batteries, you know, or something of that sort? Uh, getting a really just super tight integration with a shipping provider uh, will actually really help your bottom line because you won't be over or under charging your own shipping options. That's that a really, uh, that's a big thing I've seen actually a lot of times with a lot of e-commerce sites is that they really don't have that great of an idea of how much it's actually going to cost to ship something. So they're just overcharging on shipping a little bit to kind of throw that margin off yeah. a little bit. Or undercharging and they're yeah, and that's a worse scenario, letting, really. letting yeah. profits go. Yeah. So. Yeah. When integrating those shipping options, it's not only about the consumer and giving them all these options, but it's making sure that you on the back end have an understanding of how to actually properly integrate and not over or under. Cool. Yeah. Be ready to plan and we'll help you when you're in. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Bixley Tech Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed that conversation between Chris and Cody as they talked all about different features you can have in your e-commerce app. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and leave them in the comment section and we will get right back to you. And don't forget to check out the description box down below. We have a bunch of really helpful links in there, including a link to our free custom software guide, which walks you all the way through the process of developing your own app idea and getting it ready for development. You can also check us out at Bixley.com and right at the top there's a button that says Start My Roadmap and that gets you a free 60 minute call with Chris to talk about your next app idea. Until next time, this has been an episode of Bixley Tech Tuesday. Mm -hmm.